Hi everybody, Julie here. I'm going to show you how to make a wet palette for acrylic paints. And if you know acrylic paints like I do, they dry too fast. And there's some options that you can purchase open paints by Golden or other brands that uh, give you a longer working time. You can add slow dry blending medium as well, but they don't last two to three weeks. A wet palette is your best friend. I used to do portraits and it would take two weeks to paint a, a face and you'd mix up all this paint and then it would dry and then you'd have to start over again. And that was really um, frustrating. So you can purchase wet palettes out there. They come with special papers. Uh, I lucked out and found an old Tupperware container. So anyways, let's get right to it. I'm going to show you the few supplies that you need. Um, first of all, a Tupperware container. This measures 9 by 12 and it's only one and a half inches deep. Uh, I like that it has a clear bottom so there's no color distracting you when you're working with it. Um, it's it, it's not a key. White or clear would be best. Um, I like that it's shallow so that when you use your palette knife to mix paints, you're not reaching in and it's not awkward to um, uh, work with. And um, so I happen to have this Tupperware container and I will provide a link to it. I don't know if you can get this exact same one. Uh, you could cut down something and save the lid, even though the lid might not fit exactly. It would um, provide a, a barrier between that and if you had to slip it into a plastic bag, you could do that as well. Some people just make the wet palette. They don't have a lid and they slide it into um, a, a plastic bag but then the plastic bag will settle and touch your paint. So you want kind of something on top, even if it's a piece of cardboard, just to um, keep the bag off the paint. Ideally, a tight fitting lid is, is good. I mean, this isn't, how tight fitting is it? This is for a freezer. And it's got this dial here, which is just for dates. Uh, as well, I have water, and because I'm not beside the sink, I'm going to use this to drain the excess out of uh, the container. Paper towel, um, a knife for scissors, depending on how thick your, your, your mat is, and a ruler, and I've got a Sharpie. I have a scraper, which I use to clean up after I'm done painting. Uh, I have a cutting board and this is a placemat. It's something I got at the dollar store and it doesn't really matter what it says on the other side. This is um, nice and smooth and white. So clear or white would is ideal. Um, especially if your containers got a color to it. You want to mix your paints on a white surface. A lot of um, palette paper is white. You can also get palette paper in different colors as well. So the easiest way to do this is to trace the bottom of your container. And uh, I'm just going to hold it down and simply go around. There we go. And now I'm just going to cut off the excess. If I have to, if I make a mistake, I'm thinking to myself, then I have enough to make two just in case. Uh, I don't see that happening. should kind of snap. Almost tear it 
it. No, nope. it's not going to let me. Do that one more time. Almost. There we go. Okay, uh, I'm going to use scissors. Doesn't have to be perfect or exact. If you want, you can. Um, with the ruler on the straight edges. Now, when I'm done, I could use rubbing alcohol to remove the Sharpie from the plastic. Uh, if you want to clean it up. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Oh, it's a little larger. I did that purposely. It doesn't have to be exactly a tight fit, but I don't want it to bind. So I'm just going to Take a little more off. See how it works. Okay. Keep going. So I guess I should have cut onto the inside of these black lines. I think that's going to work. Okay, that end is almost good. I'm going to cut off that corner. Oh, just a little bit of fiddling. So this whole end is a little bit long and wide. So it looks like I'm just going to cut right inside of with that. Okay, so the next thing is to grab some paper towel. I have the ones that separate into small little pieces. I'm going to take two pieces. You could do three. I find two works. I just finished using my wet palette yesterday and I had the paints in there for at least two weeks painting my birdhouse and um, Take your water, pour it in. You don't have to. You don't have to pour the whole cup in. What you want to do is soak all the paper towel. And then simply drain it out. until it stops dripping all by its own just let gravity do its thing and so I'd say that was a, maybe a quarter of a cup I'm guessing super absorbent paper towel I'm not cutting the corners of the paper towel. That's good enough. I'm going to take my cutting mat and put it on, side, on the inside. And that is it. Voila. There's your wet palette. Ready to go. So I'm going to show you how simple and easy it is to mix up some paint. So I've just got some Liquitex Basics paints and uh, Amsterdam acrylics. Get myself a 
palette knife. Squirt down some paint. I'm going to, I think I'm going to add another couple of colors. So it might seem like a small area. Once you start mixing your paints, you'll see how, uh, how easy it is once you play around with it and you know, you think you need a whole lot of room. You can. Um, so I'm going to add a little black here. I just grabbed some yellow and green and black and white. And then what I'll do is I'll take a chunk and move it over here and add some, make some other values. Make that whiter. Tint it down, add a little yellow and keep going. Take a chunk from here. Maybe add some over here. And this would be considered the first pile. Once I mix up the master color, everything gets mixed from that. So the key is to make a whole lot of paint. If you it's worse to have not enough paint than too much paint because the excess paint I just scrape off and put it into um, an art journal or onto to some scrap papers for uh, collage papers. And when I'm done, say I'm painting and I put the lid on, I open it and what I also like to do is say, if I'm got this open for a couple of hours and I'm working on it and I'm using this color here, these might dry a bit. Now remember, the wet palette works when the lid is closed, not when it's open. So I'll just take a very fine mist of water and spray on the colors that I'm not using and uh, work with the color I am. When I'm done, I might spritz that one a little bit and then seal it up. And you can walk away and forget about it. It's, this is absolutely amazing. It's um, a really cost-effective way of, of keeping your paints longer. I'm, I'm frugal. I don't like to waste paints and I don't like throwing anything out. Speaking of throwing things out, when I'm done, I will take, like I said, I'll take this and scrape it onto some scrap paper. Uh, or if it dries up, I will use, this is just a um, plastic um, pot scraper. And you can scrape this off onto a rag or paper towel. And throw that in the garbage, not down the drain. Have a lot of old rags and lastly now that looks stained it's like well I don't want it stained I want to mix paints on white so I believe I have some rubbing alcohol right here let's see how this works Should clean it right off. There we go. Good to go. My husband taught me this trick about cleaning it. It's amazing. 
All right, and then you just throw out the paper towels and dry it up and put it away for another rainy day. Thank you, everybody. Let me know how it works out for you.